We are celebrating Christmas in July today. Well, celebrating may be a little strong of a word, but we can get into the holiday spirit as we plan for staying on budget this year. And we have Annika Caldwell with us, the author of 23 and Debt Free, to help us stay on budget, even when we're talking about Christmas in July. Thank you for coming in today. Thanks, Lisa. So you came up with this topic. Why did you want to talk about Christmas in July? Well, first of all, it's a really popular topic right now. I don't know about you, but my email has been full of those sales advertising Christmas in July sale. Get this at this percentage off. And so it's it's something that's in people's minds right now is that Christmas topic. But sometimes we aren't preparing those finances for what's coming in December. In fact, last year, Americans took on just over $1,200 worth of debt on average um, during that Christmas holiday. And so what I wanna talk about today is how can we prepare our finances for that Christmas holiday? And so as you're putting together your Christmas budget, there's an acronym that I like to use. And I don't know about you, but for me, something that I think about at the holiday time is that peace. We all want peace at holiday times. And so what can we do to have peace within our finances? And that acronym of peace is gonna give you five budget categories you wanna think about. So you wanna think about presents, excursions, activities, cuisine, and extras. Oh wow, I like that. So if you don't mind, we'll talk about each of those categories yes. and just kind of give people an idea of how they might think about that. So first and foremost, presents. That's a big one and yeah, a lot of people think about, about presents. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like you're already thinking about that as you're seeing some of those sale things. And so as you're thinking about presents, you want to be mindful of who am I going to give gifts to. Make a list of those people and start getting an idea of what gifts you might want to give. Seems like a long ways out to think about gifts, but it gives you a chance to put some numbers behind that budget category, get an idea of how much you might want to spend, and it gives you a chance to watch for sales as those items go on sale during the next five months. Okay. E. E, excursions. So for excursions, we're thinking about the travel that's associated with Christmas. Whether you need airline tickets, you need some gas for the car, there's gonna be lodging expenses, anything that's gonna go into that travel aspect of Christmas is something that you wanna think about with excursions. And that's not crazy to think about in July because you have to plan that early. Absolutely, and those expenses can get, I mean, they can get pretty high, especially if you're flying for the holidays. Yeah, okay. A. Activities. This is sometimes something I think we forget, but there are a lot of activities associated with the holidays, especially I think if you have kids. So the Christmas party at school that you need to take goodies for, Christmas caroling with your church, a Christmas program, all those holiday extras that we wanna partake in that might cost a little bit as well. Thinking about those activities that come in the month of December. Sometimes those slip through the cracks and that's what makes you more stressed than even the shopping. It's Absolutely, all the extras. yes, those little things. Okay, C. Cuisine, that's a big one. Yes. I love the food that comes at holiday time and I think most people can relate to that. We all have those special treats, those Christmas dinners that we wanna to put together. And if you are hosting Christmas, this is even more important to think about because you're gonna have those extra mouths that you're feeding. So thinking about all the goodies and the treats that you wanna make at Christmas time and putting a, putting a price tag behind those things. Okay, that's a good one. I, you don't always think ahead that much, but that's a big one. Okay, and E again. And E, extras. Okay, those are those little things, or maybe even big things, but it's things like we need a new Christmas tree, we'd like some lights to go on the front of the house, hey, we're hosting Christmas and we're going to have 10 people at our house and utilities are going to be a little bit higher. It's that extra kind of miscellaneous category that you may need to cover some of those extra Christmas expenses. Why is it easier to, you know, kind of spread it out as well versus put it all on the credit card at one time in November or December. Absolutely, so when you think about that PEACE acronym and you put together that Christmas budget and you determine what it is, um, let's just for I mean, ease of mind, let's use the number 1,000. So let's say you decide you need $1,000 for Christmas. Well, looking at the calendar, we have five months. And so when we spread that $1,000 out and we build it into our budget and we tackle it over the next five months, now we only have to save $200 a month. And that seems a lot more doable than a $1,000 chunk at once. Um, so preparing for it is going to make you less likely to end up in a pinch at Christmas time and be tempted to put things on the credit card. You bring me peace. I love it. This is a great segment, great interview. Annika, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. And Merry Christmas in July. Stay with us. Coming up next, watch out. Studio lights, we're flying drones. Stay with us. We're going to be visiting with the Code Ninjas next.